Borat are planned and welcome to my second assembly of the week, Tuesday the 15th of December 2020. And I hope you enjoyed yesterday's assembly, start of the Christmas story. And I hope after that you undertook some physical exercise with Joe Wicks or with Cosmic Yoga. And then I hope that you enjoyed the Christmas activities sent home to you by your teachers. I know lots of you logged into Hub, into Reading Buddies, into My Maths. Lots of you using the Teams function during Hub. I know you, your six were lots of people going on yesterday. So very, very proud of all of you for your hard work as always. You know you're a very, very special bunch and your hard work. I'm sure so many of you are working as hard in, in the home as you would be if you were in school. So a massive, massive well done. Today we've got a little bit more, a bit of a twist, a different twist on the Christmas story. And some also some facts about Christmas about some of the traditions. And the first one is about Christmas tree, and then a little bit about another name for Father Christmas, which is St. Nicholas. Now, the Christmas tree tradition actually started in Germany. As the Germans went to live in new places, they took the tradition with them. The idea of the Christmas tree was brought to England and Wales by Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, who was German. In 1848, a picture was published of the royal family Victoria, Albert and their children gathered around the Christmas tree in Windsor Castle. And if we go, if we manage to get with year six this year to go to London, we travel past Windsor Castle. You can see it just before you get into London from the M4. So that's why it was a, the idea of the tree became very popular throughout Victorian England and Wales. And of course, there's St. Nicholas a long time ago. A bishop named Nicholas lived in what is now the country of Turkey. No one knows much about him, but his kindness and reputation for generosity made people believe that he could perform miracles. Saint Nicholas became the patron saint of Russia, where he was known by his red cape, flowing white beard and bishop's mitre. There are stories that he often helped children in need. In time, he became the patron saint of children. This morning's Christmas story is told from the perspective of somebody involved in the story, but somebody that you may not necessarily think of when you think of Christmas. Try and decide who's, who's telling the story this morning. I remember the day that we heard the news. King Herod, the mean ruler of Palestine, ordered everyone to go back to where they were born so that he could count how many people there were. I heard Joseph tell Mary that they were about to go on a long journey. It was going to be difficult for her as she was pregnant and the baby was due soon, but at least she had my back to ride on along the way. So who did, whose back did Mary ride along to get to Bethlehem? And just who were Mary and Joseph, I hear you ask? Well, Joseph was a carpenter who was engaged to Mary when one day, out of the blue, she was approached by the angel Gabriel who said that she had been chosen by God to have his special baby. It was an amazing time for both of them. They got married and then they were. Mary soon gave birth and King Herod was demanding that they, that they and everyone else make journeys back to their hometowns. We set off towards Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown, as soon as we could. Joseph led me over the hills and through the valleys, Mary on my back, it was a long way, and although we had to pace ourselves, there was a sense of urgency about getting there, and it was clear to us all that the baby would be born soon. The sun had gone down behind the hills when we finally arrived in Bethlehem. I was expecting to see a few people there, but nothing could have prepared me for the sights before my eyes. Hundreds upon hundreds of people had arrived in the small town to be counted. Each and every one of them needed a place to stay, and so did we. But by the time we got there, all the rooms had been taken. It was all right for me. I was used to sleeping outside, but Mary wasn't, and she was in no condition to try it for the first time that night. Joseph's voice became more, more and more desperate as he knocked on door after door, each time getting the same answer. Well, we know this from yesterday. We are full and the door would close in his face. I tried to rock gently to keep Mary calm, but I could tell she was worried. 
Finally, Joseph found an innkeeper who was willing to let us take shelter in the stable behind his house. Hardly ideal, I know, but it was certainly better than sleeping on the streets. Joseph accepted his offer, and just as well, for not long after, amongst the straw and the animals, baby Jesus was born. News of the birth spread quickly. The shepherds who were watching the sheep in the hills found out when an angel appeared before them. The angel told them to leave their sheep and follow the bright light that could be seen above the manger. And when they got there, they would find the Son of God. I will never forget their faces as they arrived at the side of the crib where Jesus was lying. They knew, as we all did, that they were seeing something truly amazing. Well, I just kept nodding off to sleep in the corner of the manger with the other animals surrounding me and keeping me warm when the visitors arrived. Three kings arrived with special gifts for the newborn, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Once again, it was obvious that baby Jesus was very special indeed, for the kings had taken the time to travel all the way to see him and to bring him such wonderful gifts. Not all kings were pleased by the birth. King Herod was most displeased. He wanted the special baby that everyone was travelling to see killed. In time, Mary had to leave Bethlehem and take Jesus with her so that he would be safe from the evil king. But really, that's a whole new story that we have to wait for for another day. I'm an old donkey now and I need to sleep for a while. So the story told this morning from the perspective of the donkey and the in the Christmas story, so an interesting take on it. And as we know, the story of Christmas is very, very special to Christians and a very, very special time of the year for everybody who celebrates it. Now, I promise you some Christmas facts. So here they are. The song White Christmas holds the credit as the most sold Christmas single of all time. Santa Claus has nine reindeer, counting Rudolph, that pull his sleigh. In Northern Europe, there was a holiday known as Yule. They celebrated this holiday by making great fires. They then would dance around the fires, yelling for the winter to end. Austria was the first country to issue a Christmas postage stamp. Silver and gold are the most popular Christmas colours, after red and green. Eggnog, the popular Christmas food, was an American discovery. The Christmas Carol, I Saw Mama Kissing Santa Claus, was made famous by Jimmy Boyd when he was 12 years old. Christmas lights were invented by the American Ralph E. Morris. W.C.T. Dobson invented the Christmas card. Canada is the largest exporter of Christmas trees. And Kings Canyon National Park, California, has the world's largest Christmas tree. Well, lots of facts for you there today about Christmas. And I hope you're all enjoying the Christmas week at home. All working hard and all keeping safe. You have absolutely been amazing this term in keeping safe. I am so, so proud of you as always. Make sure that you are really, really looking after mums, dads, or whoever looks after you. Make sure you're being good. Make sure you're being kind. And make sure that you're really having an enjoyable week at home. So to finish, as always, we'll uh, finish with our school prayer. And we all join in with this, as you know. And we put our hands together, or you may pray whichever way you wish. But we'll all say our school prayer. This is our school Let peace dwell here, let the rooms be full of contentment, let love abide here, love for one another and love for life itself. Let our school be a lovely place where all of us are caring to each other, to work our best and show our smiling faces, staff and children helping one another today and always. You know my favourite line, staff and children helping one another today and always make sure you look out for all of your family keep yourself safe and i shall see you all tomorrow as i always say over and out